years. We've been buying it uh, of late. It's one of our larger positions. And, that, and there was the narrative that again, the stock was, go back a, a year or so, it was a little pricey, but this narrative that they're gonna lose market share versus some of these uh, startup FinTech companies, I mean, it just wasn't the case. I mean, these companies are partners. They ride on Visa's rails, like Square and PayPal, Klarna, Coinbase, Stripe. I mean, they're all partners. And now that the world is opening up post COVID, the all important cross border uh, uh, revenues were up 40% year over year in, in, in the quarter that Visa just reported. And here's a stock, it's 28 times this year's earnings, maybe 23, 24, uh, 2023. Um, probably one of the most dominant business models in the world. So uh, um, that's we we've, we've recently added there and we're, and we're glad that we that, that we have. Yeah, it's pretty interesting comments from all the uh, legacy credit card companies this week about consumer activity, David, although, you know, so much attention being paid to just how much uh, the Fed wants to tap on the brakes and already signs of some uh, caution at the household level. Uh, do you just worry about that? I mean, not just for today's trade or next week's trade, but I'm talking the next several quarters, uh, this sort of slow pressure on equities as we get into rate hikes and maybe QT. Yeah, Carl, I'm really worried about it. In our last chat, you know, I talked about this idea that the Fed is kind of in its own Hotel California. Uh, I think the new narrative, or not the new narrative, the new playbook, Carl, is that we have a, a, a generation, at least one generation of investors and, uh, and traders who have never dealt with the Fed where they've probably taken away the Fed put or really lowered the strike price, and now they're going to be fighting inflation. It's a new playbook, and um, I, instead of buying the dips, we might be selling the rips. And you, and again, the rips in a bear, I think we're in a bear market. The rips in a bear market are ferocious. And when they fail to make a new high, it's just a constant drumbeat. It's a whole other psychology. And so we, um, you know, we're going to do bargain hunting, but uh, I think the Fed's in a tight spot and they're going to go inflation first and Fed put, if it's even there, later. Dave, we want to go back to Visa for a moment. If I'm reading this right, you had more uh, PayPal than Visa. Now, I think you said you're adding to Visa. Is your calculus shifting on where the opportunity is in, in digital payments and fintech and, and the, the digital movement of money or no? Those, uh, those holdings may be a little bit dated. Uh, Visa now is, uh, we haven't added to PayPal and we've added a couple of times to Visa. So Visa right now is our third or fourth largest holding. Yeah, and so I guess that's what I'm, I'm getting at. If that is the case, which it sounds like you're saying it is, when you look at the broader landscape, what are the kinds of companies positioning wise that you're more interested in in this space uh, that has caused you to shift that balance of, of Visa versus PayPal adding there. I'm thinking about, you named a bunch of companies that are riding the rails of Visa. To what degree right. are those companies interesting? Well, um, certainly, <laughs> if the market continues to get hit, again, not to, I mean, certainly PayPal is on our short list. And uh, they had, it's a, a different dynamic, a slowdown there. The valuation was really high probably one of the most expensive stocks in our portfolio. We probably sh should have trimmed it back some time ago even more. But uh, PayPal is certainly on our, on our short list. We understand the business model better than some of the other names that I mentioned. So those are the two that we're going to stick with. And if, and if the market gives us an opportunity, those two stocks will be among our largest holdings. What kind of time frame are you looking at for a visa in particular? I mean, we have spent so much time talking about the disruption that it faces. It's sort of unable to do some big M&A as we saw with Plaid. Perhaps that's changing. But the whole idea of DeFi, Web3, doesn't that ultimately sort of take down the bull case for visa in that longer term? Or do you think that that's sort of over overhyped? Our view is that it's, it, it may be overhyped. Again, this idea that um, a lot of these other type of, of, uh, of payment um, uh, plays are certain, uh, they need to partner with a Visa or a MasterCard. So we think there's kind of, there's certainly a push pull there. Uh, there's positives and negatives. And again, to your first question, we typically hold stocks for years. And so we're, we're not worried about the next quarter or two. Well, we worry about everything, but you know, we're looking multiple years out and, uh, and that's been our playbook for the past 30 years. We, uh, we only own 20 stocks. 
and we typically hold them for many, many years, as long as the business is doing what we expect it to do. David, thanks for your insights. We'll talk to you again soon. David Rolf, Wedgwood Partners.